This is a big one. The Huffington Post had a huge report out on this, and so I definitely want to shout that out. This is a common dream summation of it. It's just a little more conducive to this show since it's a little more manageable and more concise. But this is by Jake Johnson at Common Dreams. The U.S. quietly working to prevent Congress on Geneva Convention violations. The Biden administration is reportedly working to prevent the Swiss government from holding a conference on alleged Geneva Convention violations by both the Israeli government and Hamas, a private pressure campaign that comes as the U.S. is obstructing U.N. Security Council efforts to address the spiraling humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza. HuffPost Akbar Shahid Ahmed reported Wednesday that Palestinian diplomats and a number of U.N. member nations, including some U.S. allies, are preparing a call for Switzerland to launch such a conference focused on the fighting in Israel-Palestine that would cover Geneva Convention's violations by all parties. Akbar Shahid Ahmed also broke a lot of the State Department turmoil stories. Um, I know the HuffPost has become kind of a bullshit lib outlet in recent years, but his writings on this have been really good. So I recommend people check those out. Um, and when we clip this, I will link to the full article uh, that he wrote because he wrote a huge write up on this. Beatrice Finn, or Fine, uh, director of the Geneva based organization Lex International, said she has heard that more than 60 countries have signed a letter urging the Swiss government to convene a conference on the Geneva Conventions. Norway is among the signatories. Fine called the. Uh, um, initiative, an important effort to make clear that there are laws of war that need to be upheld. Officials at the U.S. State Department are hoping to convince Switzerland to reject the call, which is backed by prominent human rights organizations, including Amnesty International. U.S. diplomats are finalizing a démarche. Is that how you say that? A diplomatic uh, initiative to their Swiss counterparts that Washington hopes will scuttle plans for a meeting to discuss violations of the Geneva Conventions in the current war between Israel and Hamas, Ahmed reported, citing internal State Department documents. Both Israel and Hamas have been accused in recent weeks of violating the Geneva Conventions, a cornerstone of international humanitarian law that aims to protect non-combatants. The U.S. too has been accused of flouting the Geneva Conventions by providing arms to the Israeli military, which has used them to massacre civilians. That could be why we don't want a convention. Don't forget, this meeting would investigate Hamas as well, right? Wouldn't be one-sided. So why don't we want it? Well, I think that answers the question for you right there. Ahmed noted that formal determinations that Israel has violated the conventions in its U.S.-backed defensive in Gaza against Hamas would represent a serious global condemnation on both countries and corroborate the claims of human rights groups who have gathered evidence they call proof of such violations. Uh, two more slides here. Historically neutral Switzerland is the depository of the conventions, which means it determines when meetings of the parties involved are held to discuss compliance, he explained. By early January, American diplomats plan to lobby their Swiss counterparts to reject the request from the Palestinians and watchdog organizations. U.S. officials are preparing to make the case that the proposed conference would politicize the Geneva Conventions. That's hilarious. U.S. officials are preparing to make the case that the proposed conference would politicize the Geneva Conventions by creating the impression they are being primarily cited to target Israel, Ahmed reported. Well, they're not. That's just a lie. That's just yeah, a bullshit no, story. No, that's exactly what the whole world is saying. Yeah. Uh, we don't want Israel investigated for war crimes. This this looks like it's directed at Israel. That that really reflects the popular opinion. That's what some people are saying. Yeah, yeah, just just unbelievable. Um, human rights advocates expressed alarm over news of the U.S. pressure campaign, which comes as millions of Gazans are struggling to survive amid Israel's relentless bombing campaign, ground assault, and siege. Israeli forces have killed more than 20,000 people in Gaza and displaced more than 90% of the territory's population in just two and a half months. And many, many Gazans, pardon me, are at growing risk of starvation and disease. Final slide. As signatory of the Geneva Conventions, the U.S. has legal obligations to ensure respect for international humanitarian law and prevent further violations. Jamil Dakwar, director of the ACLU's Human Rights Program, wrote on social media, Biden administration is sparing no effort to defend Israel instead of upholding its own obligations and protecting civilians in Gaza. Louis Charbonneau, the U.N. director at Human Rights Watch, 
added the U.S. should spend less time trying to protect Israel from justified criticism over its violation of the Geneva Conventions and more time urging it to start complying with its obligations. This is just another stall tactic. They're just trying to thwart these talks because they don't want any condemnation of Israel. They don't want to be forced to cut Israel off. If they have this summit and then it's found that Israel is acting in violation of the Geneva Conventions, then it also will be found that we, by extension, will be acting in violation of the Geneva Convention since we are funding their military operation. And so another stall tactic. Once again, what would I say all the time? The difference between Biden and Trump on this is the emotional processing of the population, right? Biden acts as if he cares about innocent life in Gaza. Trump really doesn't act that way. But the situation is exactly the same. Look at what they actually do as opposed to what they say or how they posture or how they signal. There's no other reason to be thwarting these talks but to run out the time clock until Israel is done with their operation, which it will be in pretty short time. They see a date on the calendar, whenever that is, right? If they could just stall until then, Israel will have done what it has to do and our relationship will be intact. They will remain our aircraft carrier in the region and we won't have to rock the boat. That's clearly what they're trying to do here. And now they're doing so in violation of the Geneva Conventions. We knew that already, but now they are going as far as to stifle a meeting, stifle a summit, stifle a conference that would expose that in plain English for the whole world to see with no ambiguity whatsoever. Are we the baddies? Yeah, <laughs> I think we are. Um, the arrogance of power, I think, is just on full display here. The U.S. has been able to have its own way for so long that it is increasingly comfortable abandoning the tools of soft power and public relations. That can work as long as you have the financial and military muscle to force your will on people. But every time you do that, you are building up the kind of fury and resentment that makes the entire world a powder keg just waiting for you to stumble so that they can attack. That's what we're turning ourselves into. We are the greatest obstacle at this point, quite clearly, to world peace and to justice. Who it's it's interesting. Whenever whenever you're a member of a nation, you're going to be propagandized um, some more than others. Um, who's the bad guy in a story where the world is trying to investigate war crimes? Who's the bad guy? The one who tries to shut that down or the people who are fighting to do the investigation? We are the bad guys. We are the evil empire. We are the villain in every fairy tale about a, about the evil kingdom oppressing the people that you've ever imbibed. Um, and it's this situation with Israel. I, I'm sure the Biden administration would like them to stop because this is terrible for them. Um, Trump ripped the mask off the reality of American empire in one way. And that's what they really had against him that it, they really just didn't like having a president who would say, there's a lot of killers out there. Right. What do you think they're the only one? They just didn't like having somebody who would say something like that instead of what you're supposed to say. No, of course, I condemn that. That's terrible. Um, yeah, this, this in another way, rips the mask off the shallowness of American claims towards moral authority and being defenders of peace and justice. I just saw right before we went on, the headline was in a historic um first 20,000 killed in Gaza over 20,000 now how do you maintain this fiction as we continue to prop up Israel and block any efforts to hold Israel to account that we have some kind of moral authority on the world stage at this point we are just the neighborhood bully that everyone's waiting to see a moment of weakness on and so they can come in. BRICS is about that. De-dollarization is about that. It's about trying to neuter this extremely dangerous psychopath that is forcing events in a way that the vast majority of the world does not agree with. Please clap. <laughs> 